Welcome to the Alto 100, sold by Corbier. Uh, these are some folks that have a little bit of experience in this business, but this is their new baby to be bringing into the USA. Now, how do you know about the uh, about these people? Well, um, uh, Ron Corby, I know, who's uh, been with this uh, in the aviation business for a long time, uh, is, is the main guy behind this, but his associate, Dan Coffey, uh, used to work with the folks that originally imported the Sport Cruiser. So that's where Dan and I got to know each other a little bit. So these are some people that, while new to this airplane, are not new to either this industry or to the aviation industry, of course. What is some of the background information on this airplane? Well, this is a, uh, a European built airplane, and but they've done some extra work with it to really kind of Americanize it a lot more than perhaps some of the other ones. Like the last two that we looked at, those are pretty much as they were designed and kind of brought in and used that way. Uh, Ron and Dan and their staff of people have uh, gone to some extra effort to work with the factory over in Europe to make sure that certain aspects are more to the liking of the American consumer than might be the case in the original European version. Uh, so uh, uh, in that way it makes it an easier service animal, not, not only for the customer, it's good for the customer of course, he doesn't have to wait for parts to be flown in from some country way out of uh, vision, but also better for the factory because they, they can support it more quickly with parts and services that they can get locally as well. So good for the factory, good for the customer, that's good for the industry. Now, this is a, a low wing, and it looks like it's an all-metal airplane. It's an all-metal airplane. Of course, they all have some various fiberglass component parts, like wheel pants and things like that. But all-metal construction, fuel tanks right out here in the wing, easily loading, and a fuel capacity 13 and a half gallons per side, so it's 27 gallons of gas. All the fuel you're going to need to fly five or six hours at least, uh, depending on how you have the power set. And what are they powering it with now? This is uh, powered by the uh, Rotax 912 100-horsepower engine. And, uh, but the difference about this airplane, more than anything else, is the sliding canopy. Usually when we see sliding canopies, they go back. This one goes forward, which I actually think is a pretty good idea because anything that happens then is going to kind of bring it back. In case you didn't get it closed all the way, all that's going to happen is it's going to travel aft. Push the canopy to the prop and you're ready to get out. <laughs> I like that. This is, as I said, one of our few sliding canopies that goes forward. In fact, I don't recall another one, to be honest. Uh, but I like it. It uh, gives it a nice open feel to it. And uh, boy, with the canopy closed, that usual view of a great big bubble canopy is true in this airplane as well. The Alto 100's got visibility all over it. So control system wise, Dan, what are they using for controls? Well, you know, pretty conventional, Dave. It's got uh, dual joysticks, except this one's nicely done with uh, all the button paraphernalia on the top. Uh, trim and uh, push to talk and so forth, but on both sides, and all cloth interior and so forth. So you got a cloth boot around the base of the joystick. On both sides, it looks exactly the same. So what you see on this side is what you see on that side. So you have toe brakes on your side. Dual, as well. dual uh, rudder pedals, dual toe brakes. Just rise up a little bit, tap the toe brakes. Hydraulic brakes, very nice. Uh, coming up to T center section here. It's a very nice clean execution and again this really feels like a nice roomy cockpit with lots of space in between you fuel selector parking brake cabin heat stuff like that we went over the flaps here just a second ago they're kind of interesting I'm not going to move them now because you're uh, near them and I don't want to pinch anything but uh, the the way the flaps works you can you, with this red switch here uh, in the auto mode which it appears to be in uh, you just tap the flaps and they'll go down one notch at a time. Tap it again, it goes down to the next notch. Tap it again, it goes down to the bottom. When you come up, if you just press up and hold, in a second or two, the top light, there's a light indicator as well as this nice little graphic display, it'll light, and when that starts to blink, then you can take your hand off and they'll come all the way up the rest of the way as you like. But the auto switch allows you, if you went down to manual, now you can have infinite flaps, meaning that they can be in any position at all, not just one setting, which some people will like for certain conditions at their home field, perhaps. And instrument-wise, this is like a standard instrument panel that comes with it? Yeah, it looks like a pretty standard instrument panel. They've got a variety of configurations, so no, I guess we can't really say that. But in this airplane here, they've got the single Dynon Skyview. The Skyview is that wonderful system this ha that shows you uh, synthetic vision so you can see what's out there even when you can't see what's out there. That's pretty special. We've got other video on that. You can see that elsewhere. But this is the seven-inch screen, and they could put two of them in here if you like. And indeed, their whole pricing scheme and so forth has got 
both of those uh, options available with a variety of different radios and things. You need to talk to them about it. Uh, they're working with the folks at Vertical Power, which is one of our LAMA members, and uh, that gives them some extra capabilities for the electronic side of the equation. But uh, there's, and this one, this particular airplane's got a Garmin 430 in it, which is a very capable and certified system in there. Uh, but they've got a whole variety of those. So that's the kind of thing you'll want to go to the factory or the representatives here in the USA at uh, Corby Air and ask them about how you might want to configure your particular Alto 100. And a little storage space in behind by the looks of it. Yeah, a little storage space back here with, uh, uh, with, with a little bit of structure in it here. So you put kind of things in both sides. The uh, placard back here says max weight 33 pounds. But frankly, that's pretty common for a, a low wing uh, with the baggage capacity. And having just uh, flown a long distance flight, uh, 33 pounds is about what we had in that airplane too. And it was plenty for two of us for five nights. The visibility is quite... Uh, adequate for the airplane as well. Pretty dramatic visibility and of course as uh, I won't bring it back all the way and bump you here in the arm but uh, here's our uh, vent controls and so forth. Uh, very nice and even with a little bit of a handle that some of these don't have. Sometimes that can be a little difficult to grab. I like this particular execution and then of course the adjustable for airflow here or lots of it if you want to have it cranked all the way open. Uh, while you're taxiing out uh, I'm gathering that you would probably have this back part way because you the front of it up there you don't want to have wobbling around right in the aft of the prop blast, but uh, surely I have a lot of uh, air coming into the airplane on a hot Florida summer day, for example. And I guess it's got a steerable nose wheel on it then? Steerable nose wheel on both sides, uh, as we said earlier, so that's uh, very conventional in every way. Uh, metal construction is conventional, it's what people expect. Uh, map pockets and stuff like that in here, uh, and, and a quite comfortable seat. If your camera can take in the distance here, this is something that a lot of people don't consider. When we sat in uh, an earlier airplane out here, a fun little airplane called a Storch, it's got quite a short seat in it. Now that's fine because that's not a long cross-country cross airplane. A uh, real short seat doesn't support your leg as far out and is not going to be comfortable for a long extended flight. When they get long like this and with that seat adjusted all the way out like this, I've got support almost out to my knee here. and That's going to be more comfortable for the average pilot, uh, at least like me, uh, who uh, wants to be a little more comfortable in a long flight. All the fuel on board here, you're going to be in the air six, six hours perhaps and in that time you want to be comfortable. So if somebody wanted to get more information on the airplane, where would they go? Well, their website's real simple. It's just Fly Alto. Alto is A-L-T-O, so flyalto.com. No dots or dashes. And have you flown this airplane now? I have not flown this airplane because it's brand new to me. I have seen this airplane in Europe. It was, uh, it's not uh, exactly the same as this one as we discussed earlier, but it has been around in Europe for a little while. But I'll look forward to it, and I'll have that on my website at bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com.